English shorthand dictation number 278. Dictation speed 120 words per minute. Ready? Start. On behalf of the Government of India, I extend a very cordial welcome to the Chief Ministers and other representatives from the states and union territories who made it convenient to attend this important meeting at short notice. There has been a steep increase in the prices of certain essential commodities in the last few months. This has affected all sections of society, but particularly the poor and middle class families. At the outset, I would like to state that this conference expresses its empathy and concern for the people who have suffered hardships because of this problem. The problem of price rise in India cannot be isolated from the problems in agriculture markets, consumer markets and the administration. It is a problem that simultaneously affects both the housewife and the farmer. Whenever there is a steep price rise, it makes a hole in the expenditure budget of the consumer family and the income expectations of the producer family. Rising prices is a national problem. It needs to be tackled by both the center and the state government separately as well as jointly. While an objective analysis of the problem is no doubt necessary for its proper comprehension and resolution, politicization of the issue should be avoided. The spirit of cooperation and sharing of responsibility alone can help us evolve effective long-term, medium-term and immediate strategies to stabilize and reduce prices of essential commodities. I am sure we will conduct the proceedings of this conference in this constructive spirit. My government has accorded the highest priority to ensuring adequate supplies of essential commodities as well as keeping their prices within reasonable limits. Towards this end, a series of meetings has been held. Recently, the Cabinet Secretary had convened a meeting of the Chief Secretaries of States and Union Territories to review the price situation and also to evolve an action plan for curbing the rise in the prices of essential commodities as well as increasing the supplies of these commodities in different parts of the country. The plan has already been sent to you for further action. I am sure that the state government and union territory administrations have come prepared to discuss the implementation of the plan. The main reason for the recent spurt in prices was the weather. I welcome all of you to the first meeting of the Parliamentary Consultative Committee of the Ministry of Communications. We are in the midst of an information and communication revolution. This revolution is bringing about fundamental changes in every aspect of life at the national and international levels. It has also opened the prospect of India emerging as an information technology superpower. This prospect will become a reality only if we create a modern nationwide telecommunications infrastructure at the earliest. Telecommunications is also by itself an accelerator of economic growth. The telephone is no longer a luxury but an indispensable tool in every conceivable economic activity. For example, the large network of telephone booths established by the Department of Telecommunications in a short span has immensely benefited small entrepreneurs and the common person. We can see these booths even in small towns today. Experts have calculated that 1% increase in telephone density results in a 3% increase in GDP. This information and communication revolution has unfortunately bypassed rural India.
The National Telecom Policy of 1994 had envisaged universal access and availability of basic telecom services on demand. We are way behind achievement of this objective. The failure is most glaring in meeting the target of at least one village public telephone for each of the 6 lakh villages in the country. More than half of these 6 lakh villages still do not have even a single telephone not to mention other sophisticated forms of communications moreover the telephone density in such of the villages which do have a connection is very low this should be matter of concern for all of us my government will not allow the rural urban divide to get further widened because of failures in policy and implementation to meet our goal in rural telephony my vision is to see every indian village connected with the global village that is being created by the information and communication revolution the failure in the area of rural telephony cannot be seen in isolation from the flaws in the national telecom policy of 1994 and its implementation today everybody recognizes that the reforms in the telecom sector particularly relating to investment in basic and cellular services by private operators have failed i am pleased to be here at the inaugural session of the india economic summit organized by the world economic forum and the confederation of indian industry your conference is taking place at an extraordinary moment in india's democratic history whatever is happening now is a sign of the vibrancy of indian democracy however i would like to assure you that volatility in indian politics will have no fundamental impact on the process of economic reforms in the country the reform process has become irreversible and my government has depoliticized the economic agenda your summits in the past have fostered constructive interactions between foreign and indian business and with the government they have also facilitated foreign business becoming familiar with india's efforts both to carry out internal liberalization and to integrate itself with the global economy since you met here a year ago a number of new and decisive steps have been taken by my government to strengthen our economic fundamentals and to improve the productive efficiency of our system in the schedule of your meetings over the next few days you would be interacting with some members of my cabinet some distinguished businessmen economists and senior government functionaries they would outline for you not only what has been achieved during this period but also share their vision of the economic agenda for the coming months in the last 9 months my government has taken important initiatives over a wide gamut of economic issues which cover insurance capital markets information technology housing and infrastructure to mention a few the reform process initiated is wider and deeper than any comparable program earlier its multiplier effect would have long term beneficial impact on the economic and social development of india we also take some pride and satisfaction that given the turmoil in the rest of asia and many other parts of the world our macro economic fundamentals continue to be strong they create new opportunities for private investment both domestic and foreign a gdp growth of well over 5% inflation below the double digit number comfortable foreign exchange reserves positive growth in agriculture stable exchange rate management coupled with sectoral initiatives have reaffirmed the government to a policy of liberalization with suitable checks and balances i have said so earlier 
and would reiterate today that there is no panacea to bring about high rates of economic growth here. Sir, unfortunately for most of us, what is decided by the highest judicial authority in our country is that the directive principles are not as important as fundamental rights.